Good morning. Welcome to worship online and in your home with Mount Tamil Pius United Methodist Church. I'm grateful to God that we're together through the medium of live streaming. I'm Kim Smith, the lead pastor here, and I'm grateful for our team today bringing this worship service to you, to Sue Ernst for the altar and Winnie and Ike Conopath for the flowers. They give them of honor and thanksgiving for all local farmers. For Hung Jung Choi, our music director, for our technical person and production manager, Liz Westsmith, and for our music uh, specialist today, Mary Johnson. We invite you uh, throughout the service to put your prayer concerns in the comment section on Facebook. We'll collect those during the community prayers time. And especially this week, we give thanks to God for the life of Dolores Connell member of this church for almost six decades who served as the financial manager, the financial treasurer for 50 years and the membership secretary for 38. She passed away this last week at the age of 92. So we give thanks to God for her life. And now let us begin with our opening prayer. Have your Faith Matters service order with you. Please pray with me. Living joyful God, Fill us with your joy. Help us to take this time to center on you. For you formed us and gave us life. You continue to walk with us with every step and in every moment. Call us with your justice. Fill us with your joy. Amen. Now I hope by now, I think we're in wake 18 or 19, you have a candle. And as I light the candle on my family table, we light this candle to set aside this time. Let me say something about my object of joy that's on my table. This is a musical shaker from Zimbabwe. It's a gourd with uh, dried goat hooves on it to make that noise. And I think it's fun to look at and fun to play. It brings me joy. So let us stand and sing one of those great songs of joy, Rejoice in the Lord Always. prayer, can't pray enough, to uh, bring ourselves into this moment, a centering prayer, prayer a, a blessing prayer, reminding us that the Holy Spirit works, whether we are here in person or we're in our homes or we watch this later online or we worship together in spirit only. Let us give thanks to God for that bounty of togetherness that comes through God's Spirit and let us pray. Loving and ever-present God, we gather in your name, united with each other through your loving spirit. As we worship together online and in our homes, nourish our bodies and spirits with your comforting presence. Bless our homes and our families with your joy. Help us to serve your world with justice that we might rejoice in you always. Amen. Now I invite you to take something at your table and salute uh, the spirit that binds us together and say together, rejoice, rejoice, amen. Now while you enjoy worship in your home and perhaps table fellowship, I invite you to join me as we break open the word of God with the reading of scripture. And this comes from the 18th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. 
the 21st and 22nd verses. They will be familiar to you. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Teacher, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seven times seventy. Amen. Amen. So we are now in our fifth week of the joy, the justice and joy project based on the book of joy with Archbishop Desmond Tutu and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The first four pillars of joy are what they call the pillars of the mind, perspective, humility, acceptance, and humor. And now we move to the final four, which are called the pillars of the heart, and we begin with forgiveness. <laughs> Jesus talked about forgiveness a lot. It's a, it's a big conversation piece right now in our world. About a decade ago, Stanford University even began something called the Forgiveness Project. It's a very popular concept now in even secular and academic thinking. But the church and God's people have always been focused on forgiveness. It's a remarkable chapter in this book. I encourage you to find it and read it, especially if you struggle with the issue of forgiveness, of being forgiven or forgiving another. One of the foundations here is one of the extraordinary stories, the many extraordinary story of forgiveness that came out of post-apartheid out South Africa during the reconciliation time. Stories of mothers who had watched the film footage of their sons being dragged away and killed, confronting their sons and daughters' killers. The stories of Nelson Mandela, 29 years on Robbins Island, and how he became not only friends, but companions and, and uh, life partners almost in that sense of affection and bonds with the men and women who had been his jailers. One story that stands out comes from Amy Beal. Amy was an American college student who went to South Africa in the height of the fight against apartheid uh, to fight for peace and justice, and there was brutally killed by the apartheid, pro-apartheid forces. Her parents came to California to lend support to the cause to which their daughter had lost their life. And when asked why they came, they said, we want to be part of the healing of South Africa. That's the goal, the aim, the direction, the affect of forgiveness. But what is forgiveness? I, I went to Webster's Dictionary. I think that's always a good place to start. And I'm just going to read you the definition so we have a baseline. Forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process by which a victim undergoes a change in feelings and attitude regarding an offense and lets go of their resentment, anger, and feelings of vengeance or desire to punish the other. As I started this message, we understand that Jesus talked about forgiveness a great deal. And I think that Jesus would have understood the question and the reason, do you want to be part of the healing? Because we have to remember that joy is not happiness. Happiness is a good thing. Joy is also a great thing. It's a spiritual attribute. It's the core of our faith. It is that understanding of God's presence and contentment and peace inside of us. It's something we build and nurture and must work on constantly. And forgiveness, I think we can all see the relationship to forgiveness and healing if we look at the question, do you we, uh, want to be part of the healing? So I'm going to make two points today. The first is forgiveness does not mean forgetting. I grew up with the phrase forgive and forget. Never made sense to me because it didn't work. And I'm appreciative of the wisdom of these two great justice and spiritual leaders who immediately knock that one off the table. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting. It means remembering. Let me quote the Dalai Lama. Forgiveness does not mean we forget. 
you should remember that negative thing because there is a possibility that within you you will develop hatred and you must intentionally not allow yourself to be led in that direction. Forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness does not mean you forget what someone has done. Forgiveness does not mean you do not want to seek justice, nor the perpetrator is not punished. It does not mean the person is not accountable. Forgiveness means remembering with the intention of dealing with the reality, of practicing acceptance, as we talked about last week, and letting go of the consequences and the emotions and the attitude toward the offense and the offender. So forgiveness is an intentional act of remembering and then making a choice of responding with dealing with our reality, accepting where it is, and then letting go so we can move on. Because that's the second point from this chapter, which I think is so spot on for all of us, that we forgive not just for the other person. We forgive primarily for ourselves. Archbishop Tutu. Forgiveness is the only way to heal ourselves and be free of the past. Without forgiveness, we remain tethered to the person who harmed us. Without forgiveness, we remain tethered to the person who harmed us, for we are bound to the chains of bitterness, tied together, trapped. Until we forgive the person who harmed us, that person will hold the key to our happiness and joy. That person will be our jailer. When we forgive, we take back control of our own life and our feelings. When we forgive, we become our own liberator. I can't help but recall the stories of President Nelson Mandela, who invited his former jailers to join him on the dais when he was inaugurated as the first black president of the new South Africa. And when asked about that, he said, if I could not forgive them, they would be my jailers forever. I'd be in prison forever. I had to forgive so that I could be set free. I always think, I wish I had that, and I want that. And I want that for all of us as God's people, as any people, because that is one of the, be the main components of joy. Jesus understood that. When he said that you must forgive seven times 70, he didn't mean 490. It's a symbolic language. The numbers are symbolic for forever. Forgiveness for those who follow Jesus is a way of living. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a spiritual practice. It's a choice each and every time into which we are invited to enter. There's a wonderful old Native American story about a grandfather who was talking to her grand, his granddaughter about a great tragedy. He tells her, I feel as if I had two wolves fighting in my heart. One is a vengeful, angry, violent wolf. The other is the loving and compassionate wolf. His granddaughter asks, Grandfather, which wolf wins the fight? And his reply, the one that I feed, said the grandfather. The question in forgiveness is which wolf will we feed? Will we feed those feelings of resentment and anger and vengeance and the desire for punishment? Understanding that consequences may be part of what the forgiveness project is, process is about. Or will we feed that forgiveness, that dealing with the reality, accepting it as it is, and then working within ourselves, our feelings, our minds, our hearts, our souls, to let go and to allow the other to be free of us so we may be free of whatever traps us and ties us down and those chains that bind us. I can understand how this helps build joy. And I pray to God that they may be God's gift of the Holy Spirit for all of us this day. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And now we come to the time in our worship of taking our offering, an act of prayer and thanksgiving. As we do so, Mary will sing, and she's angled a bit away from uh, the camera for increased safety practice uh, with dealing with COVID-19. Uh, we picked that up with the mic, and that is taken care of well. Uh, we take our offering knowing that God is with us. And so continue to please put your prayer concerns in uh, the comment section on Facebook and let us take a few moments to listen to beautiful mu music and offer our gifts to God. <clears throat> Now we come to the time of our community prayers. I invite you to continue to uh, record your prayers for all of us on the comment section at Facebook. We'll share everything that comes through during this time. And I apologize if your prayer will not be lifted in worship, but it will be on the Facebook page and our prayer group will continue to pray. I will, and I invite you to as well. So I'm going to begin with prayers for our beloved member, Al Wuthno, whose last brother died yesterday. He was the youngest of seven boys. So let us pray for Ray Wuthno and his family, and for Al and Sandra as their family as they mourn this brother's death. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for Miguel's mother, for Nancy, who is starting her new medical treatment. Let us lift these prayers to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Gail raises prayers for Nelda and Frank and for Yolanda and Tom and their families. Thank you. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Mary Michael lifts up prayers of gratitude for the life of her grandmother, Biddy Blessing Stewart, who is being buried today in Alabama. Let us give thanks to God for her life. Lord, hear our prayers. Jan asks traveling mercies for jail as she goes to visit family. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us give thanks for the service of and traveling mercies for Kevin, who is returning home today with his time with the Marines. Let us give thanks to God. Lord, Hear our prayers. Let us give 
prayers of thanksgiving for time away for Tricia and her family as they travel, if they travel, traveling mercies and thanksgiving for her life. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers of peace and healing for Patrick's mom in Britain who's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Let us pray for healing and peace. Lord, hear our prayers. We give thanks to God for the life of Dolores Connell and pray for her family and all of those impacted and infected with COVID-19. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Shauna asks for prayers for all who are separated from their families in this difficult time. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for young families facing the uncertainty of school resumption and for all students and teachers in the struggle to know how best to both educate our children and keep us all safe. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Gary asks prayers to watch over Connie as she travels to Colorado. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. We give thanks to God for Richard and his quick recovery from cataract surgery and pray for his family. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for those who have continued to work in this time with special thanksgiving for nurses, doctors, medical workers, and technicians, all those who provide medical and personal care, and for those in businesses which have remained open for grocery and store workers, for, uh, for state patrol officers, for firefighters, for EMTs, for everyone who continued to work and provide for us as we tried to safely shelter in place, let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Lockwood asks prayers for guidance on how to respond to the rampant misinformation about both COVID and the fight for racial equality. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us pray that we may learn and know how to be greater servants of justice and peace. Lord, hear our prayers. I invite you to continue to post your prayers We'll move now to the Lord's Prayer, and please know that your prayers, as they come in, are lifted to the Lord. And I invite you to join me in praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you, body of Christ, to stand as you are able. And if you're with if yourself, shout it out. And if you're with others, share with them the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And I invite you to text that to somebody, put it on the comments section, allow that great message of peace to go forth. This is the book of joy. And so we have some ideas from the book of joy. That's in your order of service under going out to worship to build the foundations. And the question or the action step might be, if you find yourself in a place this week where you have to, you've made a mistake, or there's a disagreement, try to feed the wolf of forgiveness first. I want to finish with two very quick announcements. This week, our Tuesday Engaging Faith Group begins with this book, White Fragility, Robin DeAngelo, a critical read at this time. You are invited to join us. It's an open group. Let me know, and I will send you the Zoom link. And if there's enough interest, we can start a second group at another time of the week. Secondly, we have these wonderful blank sign boards and we have standards for them. And we're asking and inviting all of the families with youth and children to come and 
get, uh, come down to the church right now. They're out front. We can make arrangements for you to come get a sign uh, so that we may post throughout our property uh, Black Lives Matters and social justice signs to show our solidarity with that movement and with everything going on now toward racial equality and social justice. Finally, at 11.30 this morning, following this, we're having our second town hall meeting, check in about how we're doing and to hear about what the future of worship and gathering will look like. That, that link is um, on the website and in your Faith Matters. So you're welcome to register first and then we'll start at 11.30 for a town hall meeting together. Thank you. Let us stand as we are able and sing God's joy. Please join me in our prayer for building joy. Repeat after me. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. God, help me to focus on how you are in me, with me, bringing joy to me and through me. For we are a people of justice and joy. Amen. Remember that God is always with you, even in these times of challenge and uncertainty. God's justice is at work. Dr. King talked about the long arc of, of, of time bends towards justice. Let us be servants to help bend that arc and be God's justice people. And that God's joy is there for us to nourish and build us up, to allow us to move into forgiveness into thanksgiving and so that we may be a people of joy. Let us know, go now in the love of God and may that love encircle you. These are the times when God's justice love will confront and challenge you. Allow God's merciful love to comfort you and let us carry that love to each person that we meet. In the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit, let us go forth in peace. Amen.